Let's work with the HTML part. Let's see the HTML. Now, before moving to the HTML, it's very important that the application which we are going to use, that is the text editor which we are going to use, is VS Code. So, in our entire journey, we are going to use the VS Code, okay, as a text editor. If we are going to, if we are developing an application for React or for JavaScript, it is suggested that you must use VS Code. So, just from where you can just search on Google, you can just search for VS Code. That is VS Code download. Okay. Now remember, guys, VS Code is a separate application which is having which is having a logo in blue color. Okay. It's having a logo in blue color. This one. Okay, so you will just install that. So just I will show you the process how to do it. So first search on Google, okay, regarding the VS Code, the very first link will be there. So click on that link. And then depending on your operating system, like in my case, I'm in Windows, so I will just click on download. Okay, so it will just say get started and it will give you some guidelines also. Okay, so it has a huge support okay, for the different different programming languages. Just I will click on the, <coughs> just I will click on that setup. Okay, so the setup will be get, so we will get an installation wizard for it. So you guys will install that installation wizard. You will just in install it by following the same process. So you will say, I accept Then just say next. Then it will ask you to where to install it. It will ask you where to install it. So it will give some path. Okay. And it will just say at least 353 MB space must be free. So then say next, it will ask you that. Do you want to create a start menu folder? If you want to create, you can just say yes. Then say next. Here I will request you all to tick all the options, all of them. They, there are four, sorry, there are five checkbox. So just check on all of the checkboxes. And then just say next. And then it will ask you for the installation process. So you can just simply make an installation process by installing it. Okay. So it will be get installed. It will be get installed without a trouble. And it will be get installed with your user. Okay, that is a specific user. It will be get installed. So this is the way how you can just do the stuff. Okay. Now those who are already having that one. Okay. Those who are having all that one are installed. So don't worry about it. And currently no need to install. Okay. Simultaneously. Remember, currently there is no need to install it. Okay. So just I will say finish and it will be get launch. Now in my case, I have already installed it. Okay. So in my case, it will not show me any, any relevant output for that. But in your case, there will be a new icon that is called the VS code icon. This will be the icon which you will have. My VS code settings are a bit different. Okay. So you may feel some difference in my code and in your code. Okay. Or, or in your VS code. So in VS code, you are having multiple options where you can just make some changes and settings. Okay. <coughs> So I will just zoom it a bit. So you can see that one relevant project is open. Okay. That is a previous batch project is open in my case over here. It is just showing me that. So I will just close that one. And for you guys, I will just create a separate folder over here. We'll just double click on this VS code. Okay. And you can just drag and drop this folder in VS code. Okay. That's it. You just need to do that. one. Just drag and drop it over here. So that will automatically open your folder. Okay. Without a problem. Okay. Or you can do one more thing. Okay. Just do one more thing. Just drag this folder and drop it in view on the VS code icon. So automatically it will open that VS code in that given folder. Okay. So you must be able to open that in your project directory. There are different, different ways which you can do. This is one of the way you, which I will suggest to you guys. Okay. This is one of the way which I will suggest to you guys. Just drag the folder and drop it in your VS code icon or on your, on your VS code icon. You will see a UI which looks something like this. By default, you will also get it like this one. <coughs> okay. So there are three parts. At the left side, you will have some icons. Then you will have some directory structure. Here you will have blank space. That is a directory. And the file name will be there like say get started or welcome will be there. Okay. 
So the major portion where we are going to work is under the get started. Okay, because here we are going to write our code, the entire code. Okay. To create a file, you will see there is an explorer is written. Okay. And next to the explorer, you will see there are different different icons are available. So the first icon is to create a file. So let's say that I want to create a file. So I will just click on the first one. And you can give a file name whatever you want. Like I will give a file name like intro.html. Okay. And also we can create a folder like I will create a folder like sample dot. So sorry, the sample folder. You can just give any name. As I'm creating the files and folder, you will see that in my project directory also there will be the reflection. See, here is the reflection. So the sample folder and intro file is available. So whatever you will create in text editor, whichever file you will create in text editor, those all all file will be created actually. Okay, means they will be permanently available, and that is how we will just work with it. Okay. It's an example, okay? So, like, I can create a file called as, like, say, abc.txt also. So, you can just create any type of file under the VS Code, okay? You can just create any type of file under the VS Code, okay? So, this is how the VS Code can be used. So, you can just open multiple files of v under the VS Code, and then you can close those files also. There is no problem, okay? You can just open n number of files, whichever, how much you want. But it is suggested that only open minimal file because it will consume your RAM. Because one file will consume some space on RAM for temporary usage. That application will wait more space for that. So it is suggested that you must use the way over here. Now the question is that what is exactly the HTML and why we use it? So the HTML is nothing but it's a hypertext markup language. What is the full form of HTML is? It's a hypertext markup language. It's a hypertext markup markup language. Okay. It's a hypertext markup language. So it's a hypertext markup language. So what is the use of hypertext markup language or what is the use of it? So it is basically used to create a layout for your web page. So I can say that HTML is used. HTML is used to create a structure for a web page. For a web page. Now at the very beginning, I have shown you guys that how the page looks when it it comes with the HTML or when how the page basically looks. Okay, without a design. So just I will show you one more time by just deleting some of the code of this VS Code website. Just I will delete it. So this is how the HTML will look like at the very beginning because it's a skeleton. It's a skeleton or it's a structure for your web page. Now, when we deal with the HTML, you will see that some texts are big in size, some are small in size. Also, the video is also added in, in this particular page. Also, you will say some of the text is having some underline with them. And if I just scroll a bit up, you will see that there is some list is also there. See, the list are also there. So it means that HTML, whenever we work with HTML, we work with some layouts, we work with some text, we work with some images. But those all the text and images, will not have appropriate shape and size, how we want to develop a beautiful website. So that's why it is called as a skeleton. That's why it is called as a skeleton. Okay. So if I want to develop any type of website, the very first thing which we do is we create a skeleton. Okay. Yeah. So it's a skeleton. Now, like this is something how it will be one to you guys okay or this is how something the page looks like so so now the question comes over here like say as i as i as I stated you guys that html is nothing but it's a hypertext markup language uh, again the vs code is within okay i just need to close it okay now let's cancel it yeah fine so 
HTML is nothing but it's a hypertext markup language. Now the question comes that what is a hypertext and what is a markup? So basically the hypertext means there are the two meanings of the hypertext. First, we can say that, that when I want to move from one page to another page, I want to move from one page to other page. Okay. We need the symbol symbolical text. So hypertext means we can just move from one page to another page by a means of symbolic representation or by the means of symbols. Symbols means which are like say having some decorations. Okay. The symbols, symbol and text. Okay. And basically there is one more meaning of hypertext. Hypertext is nothing but it's a combination of symbols and text. Hypertext is nothing but it's a combination of symbols on text. Okay, symbol and text. Okay, so the huge combination of it, we commonly say it is a hypertext. It is not a normal text. So it will have some symbolical representation and the text representation. Okay, and the question is that, like, say that what is the markup? Now remember, guys, markup is nothing but it's a syntax. Syntax structure. It's a syntax structure or it's a syntax to create a, to create a HTML code. Okay. It's a syntax structure to create a HTML code. Now the question is that how this markup looks like technically how they looks. Okay. So in HTML markup looks something like this in HTML. Markup looks something like this. So the syntax structure of markup is like this. We are having a less than sign. It is also called the angle brackets. Then we have a markup name. Okay. Then we have a markup name and simply we just close that markup name by using one more angle bracket. This is technically called as an open tag. It is called the opening of tag. And there is one more which is, which will have the less than sign. Okay. There's an angle bracket. Then it will have a slash before it. This slash will be the first one. Okay. That is the alternative of question mark. And then again, we use the markup name. Okay. And then again, we close that one. This is called the close tag. Okay. This is called the close tag. Apart from that, there is one more syntax in which we use a markup name, markup name, and at the end, just we will close that one. This last one is so called as self closing that. It is called as a self closing that. So the markup is nothing but it's a syntax to create a HTML code and the syntax looks something like this. Okay. So it looks something like this. So this is something how the syntax works. Now the question is that do we are going to create our own syntax pattern? The answer is no. So in HTML, this all syntax are predefined. So in HTML, all syntax are syntax are predefined. Predefined means they are already created. We just need to use them. Okay. We just need to use them. That's it. A simple and sober. It's very good, right? So we don't need to create any of the, any of the markup. That is a, any of the markups. Okay. We don't need to create them. They are already available. So everything is by default available in HTML element. So every, this markup names. So there are different, different markups, which are available in HTML. <laughs> okay. And we will see them one by one. So I will just enlist that which are the markups, which we are going to see. Okay. And all these markups are already created. So they are predefined. Technically we call them as a predefined. They are created. Now to work with HTML, we use a file, which is having the extension as HTML. Okay. Or HTM. So either you can use HTML or HTM, any one of it. Okay. Nowadays we use HTML. Previously, 
when in 1998 1999 htm was used now also some of the website use them okay but nowadays we use html only so if i want to work with html code okay we by default we must use html create the file with the extension of html or dot html now i will prefer to use html so here i will create a file already i have created the file so i will delete it okay just i will delete that file and i will create it over here that is i will say today is our intro so i will say intro dot html so this html is a extension now many of the candidate who have, who might create i have created this file you will not get this icon which i am having with me okay this is the icon of html file that is due to i have installed some extension with it so i will provide the extension list afterwards not right now so let's see how to create our first html page so let's create the first html page okay so let's create a first html page so i will just say my first html page let's create it so here we will see that how to create a basic html page so to create a basic html page we will need three different types of markups okay but before that i need to show you some more things so what we do basically when we create a html code we use a open tag that is a markup the first markup that is open tag which is this one okay we use close tag also simultaneously so the code looks something like this it is like say open tag with markup name okay and then we have a close tag with it so the if the tag is not self closing that is in the end if it is if it is not having slash then it will have a separate opening and it will have a separate closing so here i will just say markup name okay and in between this i can write some content content or you can say it as a text also content or you can say it as a text also so this entire thing means this particular opening element opening markup that's open tag then the content or a text or a closing tag the combination of three is called as a html element so technically we see them as a html element which one this entire thing so this combination is called as a html element this entire combination is called as a html element remember this this is something which is important this is something which is important over here yeah now the most important thing is that so let's see that how to create a very basic page by using these elements so we will have these elements so in html there are main three elements first is called as a html second is called as a head and third is called as a body so first is called as a html second is called as a head and third is called as a body html is nothing but it's a parent element parent means it's a main element you can say it as a parent main or technically we say it as a root element okay you can just call it anything it's a root element so your page must start always with html it's very important then also we have the second element called as a head element this head element is technically used to store the page information to store the page information <coughs> and the third is nothing but it's a body element so it is used to display the data so whatever we see on the web page like say you can see on my screen i'm having different different sites so whatever you are watching on my screen that is from this particular portion okay from this particular portion till here everything comes under the body only okay so the entire thing comes under the body only so what this means it means that <clears throat> just a minute guys so what this means it means that when we work with html so whenever we work with html these three elements are compulsory you must use this three element compulsorily okay so the html is nothing but it's a parent element then we will have a head which stores the page information page means html page current page and the body is nothing but it is used for the display purpose 
Okay, so let's use it like this. So let's see the structure over here. Okay, so let's see a structure. So let's create a structure. So the very first, I will just use a markup syntax structure like HTML. Now, as we are going to use VS Code, as soon as I try to close that element, automatically it suggests me that closing is there, and it closes automatically. That is a good thing of VS Code. One more thing is that if I type directly type HTML, if I hit enter, still the syntax structure will be get created. So no need of writing everything. Okay, that will boost your coding coding way. Boosting means you can type it rapidly. So just I will start like I will say I will have HTML page. Sorry, HTML element, and inside this HTML element, it is divided into two parts. One will have a head, and the second will have a body so the first one will have a head and the second one will have a body means the first will be head second will be body inside the head the information is stored inside the head element the information is stored and inside the body the display is been done so which are the things i want to show to the page we just use that one. we will have the head and we will have the body now the question is that which are the elements which are used in head commonly so i will list out some elements which we use commonly okay that is the elements which we use commonly i will not explain all of them okay so i will not explain them all at once here but i will just show you that which element we use in head section because there are limited elements in head section so the first element which we use in head section is a title then there is one more element called as a link. Then there is one more element called as a style. Also, there is one more element called as a meta. And we have one more element called as a called as a style. Okay. So these are the typical elements which we use. Now, one by one, as we are going to move forward, I will explain them all. But currently, let's see that what is use of title. Okay, so these are the elements which we use in head title, link, style, meta, and script. Not a style, sorry, script. So the script element we use it. Okay, so one by one I will enlist them all. So don't worry about it. So now here I will just write like say hello and welcome to HTML. Okay, and let's save this one. So I will not write anything in the head also currently. Let's save it one. Okay. So now to run this particular page, there are a couple of ways. The first way is that just open your project in the directory. Just open that one. So I will make make a right click to the file and then I will say reveal in the, in the file explorer. That will open my project directory. And then if I just make a right click, so there is an option which is called the open with. And on clicking of Google Chrome, simply you can see that file has been opened. It is saying hello and welcome to HTML. This is the traditional way which you can use. Okay. This is the traditional way which you can use. You will say that this is one of the way. Now you can try this way and you can use this way also. But the problem of this particular way is that if I try to change some code, like I've removed welcome to, I will just say Azureka. And if I save this, I need to refresh it manually. And in development, like say if you are developing an application, it is not good to refresh the page again and again, again and again. So what if we have something in such a way that as soon as I type something, like I have just used Azureka, and just I will say it's awesome. Yeah. And if I save this, automatically I want that on my browser there must be the reflection automatically it must get refresh so for that what we can do we can use a live server we can use a live server what is a live server so live server is an extension okay so live server is an extension so in vs code you will find at the left side you will find this four box icon this icon is called as an extension icon so if you just click on this extension icon you will get extensions like this. Now, some of the extensions are installed in my case, some are recommended to me. Now, I'm having 19 
extend icons sorry 19 extensions which have been installed by me okay so in your case it might be not be there if you are new to the vs code so you can search the extension from the search bar you can just search the extension from this search bar okay you can do that one so let's search it over here okay let's search it so just i will search for live server okay and there is a, there is a developer name as a ritwik day okay so the live server who is be uh, who have been created by ritwik day you will just see it over here so you just click on it and you will get a installation icon like how i am having over here current okay the same icon you will get it over here and if you click on that particular live server you will get the install icon over here so just click on that install icon and depending on your internet speed it will install it will not take much more space so don't worry just install it once it has been installed once it has been installed just do one thing close your vs code and again open it just double click and just open it now the previous project directory will be as it is that is a good thing of vs code that it opens our project in the previous directory so see the project is there okay we are having the same project without a trouble but now you will have some more options with the vs code and that is something which you can see at the bottom which is called as a live server it will just say go live so if i just click on this one it will say me that to go live okay and automatically it will open a page over here so just will open one tab it's it's used that one. So it will open. Uh, it will just ask me some things. I will just say allow. Yeah, and you will see that it has been opened. See, now the awesome thing is that uh, just I will close. Okay, I will just do one thing instead of using it over here. I will just use one web tab only. So let's use it in a new tab. Okay, let's just just have copy pasted the code. So now in my case, it is just open in the Chrome. Okay, that's it. So what you will do, guys, you will just install that extension called the live server. Once it is installed, okay, just restart it. Uh, just restart your VS Code. Means close it and start it again. And then you can just see the icon at the bottom. Now sometimes it may possible that your icon is not available. So do a simple thing. Just create the HTML page. Minimum this much code must be there in a stable page. Make a right click, you will see that there will be the option called as open with live server. Just click on it. And the same thing will happen. See, it has been open. The same thing will happen. It might be case that if you are not admin, you will not able to run this live server properly. So you can use the older way, which is this one. No issue with that. So don't worry if your live server is not working. So even though if you are getting any error, you can ignore it currently. Just use this part of traditional way to check your HTML code. That's what I will suggest you right now. Now, if I just try to save this one, see, I will remove like, like say it's awesome here. And just I will say welcome to Azureta. As soon as I save, you will see that the live server is refreshed automatically. That is the live page has been refreshed automatically. And I just need to refresh this one manually. Okay. So that is a major difference between, between these two. A very major difference and that is what i will suggest to you guys to just do or to experiment it now the question is that sometimes it happens like you will see one thing that like when i'm using my page okay like say azureka is having some title at the top see here also google is also having a title at the top also like say this web intern is having a title okay we, the xdv is having a title but our page is not having a title why this is so the reason is that the, the, the reason for it is we have not used or we have not we have not used a title okay till now so the title is an element which we use inside the head element so if i just say title it is commonly used to define a page title so see the description is given the title element represents a document's title or a name so in between these two title sorry in between this opening and closing title we can write a title name, like say intro to HTML. 
and let's save this and the magical thing is that now you can see that i'm having that one over here okay so now a page is also having a title but you will see one thing that you will see one thing that every website is having their unique icon but we are not having our unique icon it doesn't look good right so we will change this icon in our upcoming sessions technically that icon is called as a fav icon we will change that one. the element which we have seen till now under the head section we are having the element called as a title and it is used to create a title okay it is basically used to create a title for a page it is basically used to create a title for a page okay create a title for a page which can be view in the tab okay we can just view that in the tab we can view that in the tab or it in the tab okay we can just view that in the tab simply so this is what we are just having with a title only nothing more than that okay now it may be possible like say sometime it happens like i want to write something in html like i want to write like say this is a html code and if i save this you will see that it will be get printed in html but sometime it happens that i don't want to show that in my output i don't want to show it but i want to keep it for my reference the reference means as we are a developer we write something okay for our hints so if you want to write something as a hint only and if you want to don't show that on the html page for that we use the comments okay we use the comments 